Hey everybody, Nathan Ronan, CFA here with another update. This one for level three candidates who are taking the level three exam in August, 2024. It's coming right up. And if you wanna hear about some last minute guidance and some last minute help, you know, continue listening. Please press the subscribe button now and the notifications bell so that you can continue to receive these updates as I post them on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. All right, I'm getting questions all the time. Candidates, not candidates, people just looking for advice. I get it, you got your level three exam coming up. Some of you might be nervous. If you're really nervous about taking your level three exam in August at this point, you know, almost mid-July to end of July, then obviously you're not very uh, happy with your study pr process. I mean, it's natural to be nervous about any exam because you don't know what they're gonna ask, but if you're feeling strong that you're not gonna pass or you're feeling that you're gonna pass or you're thinking that you might not pass, you know, that you're gonna fail, that's an issue, okay? That's not proper study because if you've properly been studying, then you should feel pretty good and pretty confident. But I'm gonna try to help you out here. The level three exam, you could study the material till you're blue in the face. You can go over fixed income 57 times. You can read uh, equity and alternative investments in seven different sources, including the CFA curriculum. It doesn't matter, that's the content. 50% of your exam is essays. Essays, we also call them constructed responses. I can't help but tell people all the time, and they fight me on this sometimes, but retakers never fight me on this. And that is that the level three exam result is very skewed toward those essays. Those essays are integral to doing well on the exam and passing because you didn't have essays at level three, excuse me, at level two, at level one, you've had item sets at level two. So you already know how to take item sets, how to answer A, B, or C, how to look at the case, analyze it, and come up with hopefully the right answer. The essays are the constructed responses as they're now called, that tends to mesmerize a lot of candidates. If you haven't been practicing up to this point with essays or doing essay mo or doing mock exams with essays, you're not preparing for this exam. You are throwing 50% of your points into the air, hoping that the graders are gonna like your answers and they're gonna give you full credit without even knowing how the graders are grading that exam. You don't have any guidance in the prep books on how to write the essays. You really don't get anything from CFA Institute in the curriculum or learning ecosystem. Um, sometimes you'll see stuff out there that's very generic in nature, like make sure you write down all the points. Well, duh, okay? Or make sure that if they ask you for two reasons, you give them two reasons. That's not guidance, that's nonsense. I could, uh, without taking the exam, you should know that. But you really do need to know how to write those essays, how to address the command words, how to give the graders what they're looking for without babbling on and telling them everything about the topic or everything that's in the curriculum and getting minimal or very few points. That is key. So right now, your, the best guidance I can give to candidates is, if you're not feeling comfortable, move away from the material. Don't keep going over the material over and over again because it's not really gonna change much. You need to see the application of the content to essays and practice with those essays. Now here's the problem. If you look at essays that are in the CFA learning ecosystem or from some of the prep providers you know, that you might be using or board their mock exams, guess what? The answer key is gonna be very long. Yeah, they'll tell you add two points here. But the bottom line is self-grading is basically not very useful because you can't really be objective about whether you're answering the question or not. Okay, and the answer key is quite long in many cases and it's more of a study tool than it is a true answer key of exactly what the grader is looking for to give you all the points. So what do you do? What's the best solution to this? The best solution to this is to do a good fair number of mock exams that have obviously an essay component, but the best thing that you can do is get guidance and understanding on how to write those essays. And that's why I'm gonna challenge you. Stop looking at prices, get over this exam, because retaking the exam is thousands of dollars in registration fees and in your time. Value your time, time is money. I would absolutely, and yes, this is a plug. Sorry folks, I will plug it. You might wanna consider doing one of my essay mock exams. You can either do it with me in person, on Zoom, to, in person on Zoom, on the set dates on my website. I believe they're July 21st, 27th, and August 4th. You could check my website. Or what you can do is you can do them on demand anytime. So once the exam has been released, you can actually do the exam on your own with the, uh, with, with the templates and with the actual 
you know, video, the Zoom video that I've recorded, going over each question and timing you. And then either way, whether you do it live with me, in person, meaning in person live, or you do it on your own with the record, the audio and video recording of the live Zoom session, then you can submit your answers to me on the platform that we have, and I will grade them in generally 24 to 48 hours, and I will not only grade your exam for you, I'm gonna give you feedback. I'm gonna show you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong, and I'm gonna show you what you need to do, and I'm gonna say, stop, blah, 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 blah. Don't do this, do, do this, do no. You're gonna get a lot of guidance. And if you have very, very thin skin, if you have very thin skin and you can't take constructive criticism, maybe this is not for you. Maybe you need to take the exam a couple of times. I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm just saying, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this for you and say, good job when you didn't do a good job, okay? I'm gonna say exactly what you're doing wrong and I'm gonna show you what you're doing right so that you have a balanced view of how to approach this exam. So if you're interested, check out my website. It's at Chalk and Board, that's the name of my company, Chalk and, C-H-A-L-K, and A-N-D, board, B-O-A-R-D, that's chalk and board spelled out, dot O-R-G. And you could still sign up for any of the three mock exams, whether you can make it live in person or whether you wanna do it on your own, which is called on demand. Look forward to helping you out. Don't worry about the price. Get over this exam, finish it, get the guidance that you need, give the graders what you want and get the charter and move on, move on. Don't sit in level three, two, three, four, five times. It ain't worth it <laughs> okay anyway i'm in much better spirits these days i've overcome the covid and uh, some virus that i have which isn't interesting to you but it is my life but i'm happy to help you out and if you have any questions about the mock essay exams you know ask me but you're going to get a lot out of it and i would definitely attend it if you can in person have a great day and good luck on your exam in august mock exams mock exams mock exams you've got to practice and especially the essays